Hi there, this is Dave and welcome to my impression of Code Vein for the PlayStation 4. Recently, many people have been suggesting that I play this game, saying that it was a great action RPG with beautiful graphics and a compelling story. Not to mention that it would probably soon become rare. So I went ahead and I ordered it from GameStop under the assumption that it was a great action RPG and that it would be something like Secret of Mana or Crystallis or maybe even like Terranigma. Firstly, because those are all great games, but secondly, because I'm an old bitch. Whenever I think of a great action RPG, I don't think of the Soul series. In fact, the Soul series hardly ever crosses my mind. Yet, that's what I got here. My first clue should have been that upon starting up, they want you to lower the brightness so that one picture doesn't show up. But I don't like scary things. I don't like being freaked out. I don't like getting nightmares, and I don't like dark games. So of course, I ignored this completely. Then, you're sent to a character creation screen which is incredibly involved. You could literally make just about anything your heart desires. So I made a super cute, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, muscle-tan stud to go exploring with. Before you can get into the action, though, you're thrown into the dreaded tutorial. Ugh. I remember a time when these just didn't exist. Give me an instruction manual instead, I promise that I'll read it. Now, while tutorials can be nice and they do have their place, I would much rather a game explain things to you in a more organic manner. I mean, I'm still at the start, and I still thought that Code Vein would be similar to Secret of Mana, so I couldn't help but compare the two in my mind. Secret of Mana did not have a tutorial. It slowly and organically introduced its mechanics as you went along, first giving you a sword to fight off some rabbites, then slowly introducing other weaponry, then your party members, and then finally magic. All of this happened slowly and naturally over the course of the first few hours of the game, and never once did they throw you into some sort of tutorial arena to duke it out with ugly zombies. Yet, here I was. Despite your characters looking bright, pretty, and cheery, the world itself is decidedly not. It is a post-apocalyptic hellhole. And for the very first dungeon, you are literally pushed into a hole, and then it's sink or swim as you're thrown to the wolves. At first, I defeated the enemies easily enough, though I did keep falling off the sides of the cliffs. And then I realized that there's other combat mechanics that the needlessly long tutorial never even mentioned. So I began dodging and rolling, hoping that that would help me survive the fights. But instead, I just kept rolling off the cliffs to my doom. So much for that. It took until about the halfway through the first dungeon for it to dawn on me that Code Vein is a Dark Souls clone, not a fun, lighthearted, jaunty action RPG like Secret of Mana. The game is hard, like super hard. You will more than likely die in roughly about three hits from any given enemy. And even though you'll be constantly picking up items, none of them are actually useful and none of them heal you. They're all just crafting materials. God, I hate crafting. It's the thorn in my side that will just not go away. Anyway, the only way that you can heal is through a regeneration skill, of which you have three charges. And if you die, it has like an EverQuest death system, where you have to go back to your corpse in order to retrieve your experience points. But if you die on the way to your corpse, you'll lose all of your experience and you can only spend your experience at the various save points to level up and learn new skills. Now, granted, I didn't get too far into the game, just about two hours before I rage quit in disgust. But that being said, from what I saw of the job system and the skill trees, they actually looked to be pretty well thought out and balanced. But I really can't comment on that, because this video is much more about my first impressions and my first playthrough. And here's the impression that I got. Sometimes I kind of feel like people are punking me. First they said that 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim was like the best JRPG in years, only for it to be a visual novel in disguise. Then people saying that Code Vein is a great action RPG. And while that might be true in their eyes, it's not my kind of action RPG. And that's what I do here. I'm honest about my likes and my dislikes, and I don't like these games. I know that many people seem to like the Dark Souls franchise, or they seem to like games where the difficulty levels are off the charts, but I don't. Maybe if I were younger, I would have a lot more time to sink into something like this, 
but I play games to unwind, to relax, to kind of have like a little bit of brainless time. I don't play games to be frustrated, to get pissed off, to get angry, or to want to throw my controller out the window. Gaming is a relaxing hobby to me. I don't play games to add yet another layer of stress upon my already stressful life. So anyway, let me get off my soapbox for a moment. I finally make it to the boss of the first dungeon, and I die. And of course the save point's like 10 minutes away, so I get up, try again, and I die. So then I'm thinking third time's a charm. This time I do get a little bit further, and I notice that he turns into like an ogre about halfway through the battle. And here he really just clobbered me. So then I say to myself, I'm going to give myself one more chance to beat this boss. Then I get to him and I think, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If they can use cheap EverQuest corpse retrieval crap, I can use cheap EverQuest tactics too. And I begin running like a bat out of hell while I let my partner do all the work, citing a tactic called kiting. The druid class in EverQuest used to cast Snare on enemies while they had a speed buff called Spirit of the Wolf. Then they would kind of lead the enemy around in a circle, hitting it with DOTs and nukes until it died. And I was going to do the same thing. I ran around like a bitch, leading the boss on a wild goose chase, screaming like a little girl while my partner zapped the crap out of him from behind. I don't think that I dealt a single point of damage to the boss, because if I got anywhere near him, he would have just obliterated me. Call me cheap. I don't care, because I beat the bitch. From that point on, I was pretty much just over it. And then I was sent into some kind of like memory room, which I guess is supposed to be compelling, but I was pissed, and I really didn't care. Then I arrived in home base, only to meet other characters that I also didn't care about, and they told me to go and explore some underground city. So okay, I said to myself, for the good of the channel and for the good of the review, I'll go on to the next area. Maybe it will get better. But, in some sort of ass-backwards NES logic thing, I couldn't figure out how to leave the home base. Like, come on. I kept talking to everyone, saying to leave, and then they would say, we're ready to leave whenever you are, but nobody would actually go anywhere. I then explored every single nook and cranny. I went to all the doors, looking for an exit. No such luck. So I go to the map, which has a clue, and then it says to go to the save point and select the underground city from there. Okay. So I go and I look at the teleport list, and guess what? It's not there. At this point, I'd been dicking around in the home base for over 45 minutes, and I was over it. I was at the point where I was having no fun whatsoever, and I just said, screw this. I have never been more pissed off at a game since Lisa the Painful. But at least that game's subtitle lets you know what you're getting into. It's kind of like Persona Eternal Punishment, where you know that you're going to be punished, but here, I didn't get the memo. Good riddance. I'll go play a good action RPG like Dragon Quest Heroes or something. Now, I don't mean to be a negative Nancy or anything. I just mean to be honest. And like I've said before, what's the point of coming to an independently owned and operated YouTube channel if I can't express my honest opinion? So there it is. And also, that's it for my review of Code Vein. How did you feel about the game? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon or coming over to the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.